Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremta News 10 at 10 where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. The family and friends of one of the four murdered University of Idaho students honored his life today. Ethan Chapin grew up in Conway just south of Mount Vernon over in western Washington. His parents said he was staying at his girlfriend's Anna Kernodal's house when they were killed. Tonight those closest to him are remembering the beloved son, brother and friend. Sebastian Robertson with our Seattle sister station has more from the memorial tonight. Since the murder of four University of Idaho students more than a week ago, the sole focus has been on finding the killer. But today, the family of Ethan Chapin say it's not about focusing on how he died, rather how he lived. Through tears, <laughs> Stacy Chapin tells the world about her son. Today we're here to honor the life and legacy of our son and brother, Ethan Chapin, one of the most incredible people <laughs> you'll ever know. 20 year old Ethan was a triplet, two brothers and a sister, a lifelong athlete who loved the NFL and country music. Chapin started at the University of Idaho last year and joined the Sigma Chi fraternity. Ethan Chapin was killed on November 13th in a home near the University of Idaho's campus alongside his girlfriend, Zanna Kernnoddle, and her two roommates, Madison Mogan and Kaylee Concalves. We still contend that this was targeted. Uh, we cannot divulge the information of why we believe that or how that is integral to this investigation. Despite a large law enforcement investigation calling on the resources of state police and the FBI, no arrest has been made, no murder weapon found. And among so many unanswered questions, the Chapin family says they're grateful of the support they've received from the community in Mount Vernon to law enforcement. The Moscow Police Department, who now carry the burden every day, not only for us, but for all of the impacted families and the many strangers across the country. Your outreach and kind words are profoundly touching. Hundreds of people attended this memorial service for Ethan Chapin in Mount Vernon. His family says that in lieu of flowers, they ask that donations be made to help support youth sports in Mount Vernon. In Mount Vernon, I'm Sebastian Robertson. In the meantime, there has been an outpouring of emotion following this tragedy. People around the inland northwest are looking for a way to support the families of the victims. Well, tonight, the Coeur d'Alene, Texas Roadhouse, where Zana Kernodal used to work, held a fundraiser in honor of the victims. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk shows us how people came together tonight. It's just been incredible seeing the amount of people coming in and out of the Texas Roadhouse tonight. When we first got here around 3 o'clock, there was a line clear out the door. A lot of people asking about the details of this fundraiser, and some people had no idea this fundraiser was even happening, but they were just so happy to support these families in any way they can. Four beautiful youths gone. As the community and people across the country remember the four college students murdered in Moscow, many are thinking about the grieving families, the moms, dads, brothers and sisters these four leave behind. Blessings to the families. Yeah. Sorry for your loss. Absolutely. We're here to support you. Sasha Livingston celebrated her 50th birthday tonight and didn't know about the fundraiser at the Coeur d'Alene, Texas Roadhouse until she walked in the door. And we're happy to support it, yeah. so I'm very grateful that we're here. And the restaurant is donating 10% of all Monday sales to the families of Ethan Chapin, Zena Cronodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Consalves. Zena worked as a server here before attending the University of Idaho. And I personally, I'm from Sandpoint, and I know people that know them, and I hope things can get resolved and our uh, blessings go out to the families and friends. Absolutely. And we're here to support and give funding. People had the opportunity to write each family a note on these posters. There was also a raffle with 100% of all sales going to the four families. We saw this man walk out with an armful of yellow tickets. He says he doesn't even know what the prizes are. He just wanted to donate. Why, why did you decide to come out here today? I have two granddaughters. I'm going to be going to college in a couple of years, and I, this at home, it's a shame. I, you know, anything devastating like that is, uh, is horrible and whatever it takes to help the families and so instead of just donating a few dollars you know it's families need it more than i do and tonight the roadhouse staff is also wearing black and gold the colors of the university of idaho as they support the vandals in Coeur d'Alene, kyle simchuk from two news and looking ahead to later this week we know tonight that moscow police will hold another press conference this wednesday at 1 p.m in the meantime, for the latest updates, just head to our website, krem.com. Also on Krem 2 Plus right now, we have an in-depth look at the first few days of the investigation. 
New tonight, the Spokane City Council voted unanimously on a resolution that would keep shelters in Spokane open. It would utilize funding from the $3.5 million in American Rescue Plan Act. One of the shelters impacted would be the Hope House that would have otherwise closed. The city also shared that it would continue to work toward opening more permanent affordable housing and keep warming spaces open. And now to a night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. Over the weekend, a gunman walked into a Colorado Springs nightclub and began shooting, killing five people and wounding more than a dozen more. In an effort to bring you more to every story, Krem 2 sat down today with Esteban Harevia. He is the president of Spokane Pride and the server at the Nine Bar to talk about the impact this shooting has had on their community. While people try to use violence to intimidate us, to scare us, uh, I need people to know that their fullness is the exact counteraction that we need against hatred. It's not the first time that an LGBTQ plus nightclub has been targeted in a mass shooting. In 2016, a 29 year old man killed 49 people and wounded 53 inside the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. It marked the second deadliest mass shooting in American history and the deadliest incident in the history of violence against LGBTQ people in the United States. We, the jury, find the defendant, Yasser Daraji, guilty of the crime of secondary murder as charged in count one. Today, a Spokane jury found Yasser Daraji guilty of second degree murder and harassment for killing his ex-wife in 2020. He is now convicted of strangling his ex-wife before placing her body in her car and setting it on fire. Court documents show the couple divorced in 2015 and the two had a history of domestic dispute incidents. Daraji has maintained his innocence, but prosecutors were confident the evidence would prove otherwise. After about a day of deliberations, a jury found him guilty. His defense attorney told us he is not yet sure if he wants to appeal the case. Meanwhile, tonight, a Bellevue police officer has died after he was hit by a car while riding a motorcycle. 34 year old Jordan Jackson was sent to Harborview with life threatening injury. Sadly, he did not survive. Jackson had been a member of the police department since 2018 and grew up right here in Spokane. An investigation into the crash is still ongoing. No one in the other car was injured. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. All right, let's transition to talk weather because we could see some freezing rain tomorrow. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legou for everything on what we need to, need to know in terms of the timeline for this next storm moving in, Jeremy. Well, Mark, it looks like this thing starts just a little bit after the morning commute for us here in Spokane and much of the inland northwest. If you're in the Cascades, it starts right away pretty early in the day. So from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. is kind of the way this works tomorrow into Wednesday. Let's time it up. Snow and rain develop early in the morning. Notice by 7 a.m. it's already fallen over the Cascades. That tracks its way across the state. I think in the 11 o'clock hour, we'll start to see something closer to noon. We get more of it. Now, what looks like rain, basically Highway 2 and to the south, that is going to be freezing rain. Temperatures are cold enough right now. We are down in the 20s and with that cold air in place, it is likely going to freeze upon contact because everything is so incredibly cold. When it comes to that freezing rain forecast, forecast models put a bulk of that in central Washington. Might see a little bit over near Cheney, Medical Lake, and up into Spokane. We'll have more on this coming up in your full forecast. I'll talk to you then, Jeremy. Thank you very much.